So today we're going to be attempting to describe the top 50 programming languages uh, in a single sentence. Now, the way I've determined this is using the Stack Overflow survey from 2024. So these are the languages we're going to be covering. There are other sources, but I couldn't find anything that was amazing. So I just went with this. I thought it was good enough. And uh, before we get started, I just wanted to read Cunningham's Law. Uh, the best way to get the right answer on the internet is not to ask a question, it's to post the wrong answer. So if I do get anything wrong, or you disagree, just, you know, correct me in the comments. Uh, and just before we get started, I just want to say, don't take this, like, too seriously. This is, like, describing a programming languages, a language in a single sentence is, like, really difficult. And I tried to make it a little bit funny. That part will probably fall flat, but we'll just see. So, JavaScript. Responsible for everything that does and doesn't work on the web. Uh, use cases are, you know, front end and interactivity. You can do back end with Node.js and full stack apps. You know, it really is everything. HTML, this is just the skeleton of your site, and that's it. So the structure, defining content. Uh, CSS makes everything pretty, that's the styling. And just the other thing is, this is just to like, so you can kind of get a general gist of when you would use. A language so Python if it exists there's a library for it you can really use this for everything it is a general purpose language but a lot of use in AI back-end automation scripts SQL speak with your database enough said TypeScript JavaScript but with a babysitter strict typing uh, yep yeah. bash shell Automate your misery, you know, makes you feel like a hacker when you use it. So yeah, scripting on Linux, stuff like that. Automated um, tasks, a lot of fun. Java, runs on everything. We all, all agree with that. Loves boilerplate and hates fun, is what I've put. Uh, enterprise apps, Android development, backend systems. C Sharp, this is just Java and a Microsoft trench coat for the .NET ecosystem. So this is Windows apps, uh, stuff like that. Games, C++, like C, but you just kept adding more and more features forever. That's pretty much how you end up getting C++. And again, lots of applications. C, the grandparent of modern programming, I've put. Not of programming, modern programming. Low level control, speed, but no safety. Your, your code will break at some point. Embedded systems, OS, development, and many other things. PHP, WordPress. <laughs> I've put the cockroach of programming, so apologies. That's probably a bit mean. But it does power nearly half the internet. I think I've read that half the internet, or 43% or something like that, is WordPress. So half of the internet is basically PHP. Um, Server-side stuff, mostly. PowerShell, for when Windows admins need to feel like hackers, it's just like Bash, but for Windows. Golang, concurrency and high performance, put probably the best thing to come out of Google. A bit harsh maybe, um, but yeah, I've heard a lot of great things about Golang, and the main thing is the high performance and concurrency. Rust, let's rewrite this in Rust, everyone's heard that joke. Uh, memory safe, high performance, great for systems programming, and yeah, performance critical. Kotlin. Uh, Java but good. I'm not a big Java fan. I need to practice more. But that's the gist. Android apps, server-side dev, cross-platform. Lua, small, fast, lightweight scripting that you can shove anywhere. You will see little Lua scripts all over the place. Uh, you know, if you look at some Git repositories, Lua's often doing many little things, just little scripts. Uh, yeah. Dart, cross-platform, used to create Flutter apps but can also do other things. Uh, so yeah, web apps, cross-platform development, mobile apps, Flutter apps. Assembly is pro programming your computer directly, pretty much the lowest level which you can code, and yeah, hardware programming. Ruby, I've put the hipster version of Python, but even slower somehow. Uh, yep. Yeah. Swift, Apple, it's just the language for the Apple ecosystem, uh, if you want to code for Apple, uh, you need to learn Swift. Uh, R, good for statistics and data. Useless for everything else. Uh, I don't think it's fast either. 
there's faster options. Visual Basic, I put Windows drag and drop. <laughs> I don't think that's quite fair, but yeah, legacy Windows apps. And yeah, MATLAB, expensive calculator disguised as a programming language. Uh, yeah, that, that, that is what it is. Simulations, numerical computing, engineering tools. Uh, yeah, VBA, this is Visual Basic, but uh, for applications, office applications specifically. So any sort of office app, you can extend with VBA. Groovy, I've put Java, but for hipsters. Uh, more simple, less boilerplate. Uh, so easier, yeah, just easier to get started. Scalar, scalar for scalable. That's how you can think about it. If you want to build something that's scalable, use scalar. More concise and less opinionated than Java, which basically just means, you know, you can sort of use different programming paradigms quite easily, unlike Java. Uh, big data, backend systems. Uh, yeah, Perl, I put text processing, rejects and ugly. I don't know if you've seen Perl. I think it's ugly. Yeah. GD script, go.games. Like if Python and Lua had a baby. Uh, it kind of is like that, very beginner friendly. Uh, rapid pro prototyping, indie games, game dev. Uh, Objective C, Apple's legacy language before Swift. So this is what Apple used to use. They basically tried to make C more usable for their Apple devices and created Objective C uh, before moving to Swift, I think. Uh, so Elixir, scalable. We've kind of had scalable concurrency as well and fault tolerant. Uh, it's basically Erlang with better vibes. We've not covered Erlang yet, we'll get there. So yeah, distributed systems, web apps, real-time apps. If you want to build something that's scalable and concurrent and fault tolerant, you can use Elixir, you can check it out. Obviously, other programming languages, many programming languages can do many things, so, but this is the reason you would use it. Haskell, uh, I put, it's like taking your brain to the gym, right? It's like a workout for you. It's for academics and research. Not necessarily anything great, good, uh, or anything useful. Maybe that's harsh. Again, Cunningham's Law. Delphi, this is a Windows thing from the 90s that someone still runs. So this is Windows apps from the 90s, so desktop software, business tools, legacy systems. Uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. You'll probably not use that, I imagine. Micro Python, exactly what it sounds like. It's Python, but tiny for robots and embedded stuff. Uh, so yeah, IoT, robotics, microcontrollers. Etc. Lisp, parentheses everywhere, old as hell. There really is parentheses everywhere. I thought that's the best description of it. Uh, and it's an old language, uh, metaprogramming, AI research, academic purposes. Maybe check it out for fun. Clojure, Lisp, but Java. So Lisp was parentheses everywhere. So this is just Java with parentheses everywhere. Uh, yeah, data heavy apps. That's when you, yeah, I didn't know really know what else to write. <laughs> it's probably, it's like, a, yeah, more modern Java, I suppose. Uh, which is a lot of these, to be fair. A lot of these are just like Java, but with some other quirk. Uh, so Julia, when you want to do numerical computing, but Python is too slow. Fast math, I've put in brackets. So Julia is, a, is essentially just that, fast math. You want to do numerical computing, but really quickly, use Julia. Zig, C but safer and more features. Simplify systems programming. I think their compiling is quicker than, than C as well. So again, if you're thinking of using C, you probably may as well just use Zig. I'm sure there'll be people in the comments who know a lot more than me about that. So systems programming, game engines, embedded. Yeah, Fortran, this was invented by the ancient Egyptians to help build the pyramids. Uh, high performance, computing, scientific simulations. So Solidity, is a yeah it's the is what ethereum is built with so it's used for blockchain smart contracts DeFi, tokenization tokens etc uh let's see adder military grade code it's sort of funny because we all know at this point that military grade doesn't actually mean like good i used to think it was good military grade oh if it's military grade it's amazing uh, but what we mean here is that it's designed to survive everything and not crash. You don't want your 
code, which is, you know, I don't know, taking care of nukes, stuff like that. You don't want that code to crash. So you're using Adder. It's designed specifically to never crash no matter what. Uh, even though we know that military grade actually means the bare minimum uh, to be usable. So yeah, defense systems, avionics, critical software. Erlang, which is Adder, but for phone networks. And other stuff too, but that's that's why it was designed. It was designed to be like adder, so again, crash proof is the big thing for big phone networks, uh, real time systems, concurrency, uh, fault tolerance, and then you know we had. Oh yeah, this was. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember where it was, so you just have to go back. Functional programming for Microsoft, F sharp, uh, pretty simple. Nothing else to say there. Apex. Uh, what this language taught me about B2B sales. That's how you can think about it. Uh, so that's a sales force, custom apps, basically. Uh, so if you want to learn about B2B sales, obviously that's a joke. Then learn Apex. Prolog. Or you want a job at a sales force. Prolog. Uh, so this one was quite interesting. This is a declarative expressive logic. So it's more close to mathematical sort of statements and natural language almost way of stating things so yeah declarative and expressive ai it's also pretty old uh ocamor so i think the m in there actually does stand for meta i've forgotten what it stands for but it's type safe uh meta programming which is just code that writes code and it's fast and yeah financial tool you can probably use it for anything but, well, I'll say anything. Compilers, financial tools, research. Uh, yeah. I think the key word here, key words, is type safe and meta programming and fast. So go check that out. COBOL. You know, your grandma's programming language. This is just like old mainframes, legacy systems, banking, government apps. Uh, it's just an old language. Crystal. So this is Ruby, but faster, and it has static typing, unlike Ruby. Um, yeah, so if you like, it'll probably have a smaller ecosystem, I imagine, of available uh, support. Nim, so this is like if Python and C had a baby. It kind of looks like Python, but it's fast. Uh, systems programming, web servers, performance apps. Um, it looks pretty neat, actually. I might check it out. Uh, if you like Python, but you want high performance, you might want to give this a bash. Uh, Zephyr. So this is, I think, our last one, actually, potentially. And this is tiny code for tiny devices, is what I've put, which is uh, just IoT, essentially. And there you have it. Uh, that's everything for today. Hopefully I didn't offend too many people. Uh, again, I just want to say like the idea, hopefully you all got the idea of this. Uh, obviously you can't describe a programming language in a single, sen single sentence, I think. But I did try my best. I tried to make it a little bit funny. Leave a like uh, if you enjoyed it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.